Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we have a new flight controller and it's from Flyu. It's a F405 with a ICM gyro. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now they've copied the designer. We can say it's a remix of the Kakute F4. And let's see, let's take a look at some of the things it comes with. We get a PDB, we get the flight controller, we get some wires, we also get our spare gyro wire and we get some soft mounts and as well as some spare double-sided adhesive for the gyro because as you can tell the gyro is soft mounted above the flight controller they also give us a 35 volt 470 microfarad low esr capacitor and as well as the instruction manual i think that's about it here all right so let's go ahead and start with the pdb here now the pdb looks pretty nice we do have current sensing we have rgb leds and we also do have a 5 volt and a 9 volt regulator which is something really nice on this uh the back side of the board looks good there isn't any components so it can possibly fit somewhat flush you want to be careful with these these are probably ground pads and let's actually double check these pads here so first we're going to check the mounting holes just to make sure and see what they are i think they're all ground yeah they, they seem to be all ground and they're all connected yeah Okay, so the mounting holes are all ground here. So this is a ground, this is a ground, this is a ground. So when connecting this, just be careful with your mounting holes because they are connected to ground, all of these. So for example, if you had a solder connected from bat plus to that, then that is an immediate short right there. You could catch the battery on fire, uh, blow out your PDB, blow out an ESC. So just be very careful when doing that. Keep that in mind here. So the overall layout looks Pretty nice actually. If you could take a closer look here, we see that this would be in the back because that would be motor one, and then we have motor two, motor three, and motor four. So it's perfect beta flight orientation. However, if you were gonna put, for example, if you're gonna switch it like this, then you're gonna wanna switch up the connector as well. So out of the default, the connector will think you are going to install it like this. And I recommend if you don't know what you're doing, just install it like this. Now they also provide you with telemetry pads with the ESC signal, so that's something, that's a really nice addition to have here. So if we take a closer look at the flight controller, it does look very similar to the Kakute, however it does have some modifications made to it. So this is, we can consider this somewhat of a remix, possibly from the same manufacturer. Now it does have OSD, it is running an F405 uh, microcontroller unit, it's not running an F7, and it also has an ICM gyro, which is basically useless now since we're only running to 8K max. Now it might have its benefits, but in the overall long run, it's pretty much useless, I think. Uh, but that's just my opinion, it doesn't matter. So if we take a closer look here, we do have the OSD. We also have a nine volt regulator on board. Yes, a nine volt regulator, other than the one that's on this one, nine volt and a five volt regulator. And if you take a closer look here, something that I really don't like is I don't like pads next to this wire because for someone who's not really experienced, it'd be very easy for you to melt this here possibly. So just be extra careful when you're soldering here. I would, I would actually, if you're right-handed, what I would do is I would bring my wire like this from the left and then I'd bring in my solder iron from the right. So this way I have a very low chance of hitting it. And if I wanted to do that side, I'm not gonna be an idiot and do this. I'm actually gonna spin it around and then do that way like that. So if you're left-handed, then you would wanna do the opposite. All right, so if we take a closer look here, this, would want, this should be installed in your quadcopter like this. As you can tell, that is the arrow here. And let's just start taking a look at how we would set this thing up. So let's go ahead and spin this around so I'm able to read these. So this is the front of the board. And here what we have is on the right side of the front of the board, if it's basically down here, we have T4, which is a UART transmit pin. So if you wanted to set up smart audio, they have that prepared for you, really thoughtful. Here VO is the video out, nine volt in a ground. So you'll be powering off of a nine volt regulator. Hopefully it's a clean nine volt regulator. So that's really nice. And here we also have the R4 if you needed it, which is the UART uh, 4, and here we have the TX4, so that would be UART 4 here, and here for some reason we also have a T3, so I don't know what this is possibly used for, maybe it has some sort of inversion, but I highly doubt it. So here you have just two TX pads basically from T3 and T4 if you wanted to do something with those. And if we look at the other side, this is where the camera would be connected, and it's default. it defaults to 5 volts, so we have ground, 5 volts, and then here would be the yellow wire for your camera. And I actually think we have camera control possibly. I don't know, this says FC, but it could possibly mean camera control. That's a really nice remix here. So, so far it's looking pretty good. It has a lot of features here. All right, so if we take a closer look at the bottom, it's kind of not really well labeled, I would say. So here we see current ground bat plus. So what is this really saying? 
So here we, we get a special or just a dedicated pad for the current sensor because you know some ESCs don't have room to have you know the ESC telemetry so they'll have just a dedicated wire to output the current and that's where you want to put it. You would want to put that right here. Bottom is the ground. This one would be the battery voltage so you would give if you wanted to give it battery voltage you can do that but I'm pretty sure you have to give this over uh, at least 12 volts in order for the 9 volt regulator to work on board. So I'd highly recommend you just take battery voltage here. Next one over, we have motor one here. And above that is R5, which is UART5 received. So for example, telemetry, uh, ESC telemetry to be exact. So for so some 4 one ESCs just have one wire. So you would possibly want to connect it here. Uh, that's what I would do actually for the 4-in-1 ESC telemetry wire. Now if you had ESC telemetry and you were not using this PDB even though it's, it's already set up for you, what you can do is you bring in all the telemetry wires, hook them up together, and then install them right here. And that would be, the ESC telemetry would be on UART5. And that's what you'd want to do. So again, now here we have on the third pad down here, it's motor 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we have I think the buzzer pads here. Yes, we have the buzzer positive right there and then the buzzer negative right there. And it's very important to install them right here so the buzzer would actually get enabled. LED signal, which is uh, if you have RGB LEDs, that would go for your signal. And then another, I think, 5 volt in ground as well here. Yeah, so LED would go ground and here's the power for your LED. And then this is where I would put my signal for the LED so I can control it. Now let's take a look at the right side here. But before that, does it have a barometer on board? Hmm... Yes, it does. Look at it. It's right there. It's a little one that looks like a crystal, but it has a little hole in it. So it doesn't even have a barometer on board. That's really nice. Using really good tantalum capacitors for the OSD. So theoretically, you should not get any uh, OSD flickers like you would. You don't, I don't even think you get these that nowadays. Very, It's almost difficult to get OSD flickers. Actually, no, no, no. I got OSD flicker the other day. I'll tell you on what. I'll have an update video on that very soon. I built a quad for a friend of mine. Okay, so let's take a look at the right side and start from the top here. So here we have a dedicated pad for RSSI. So if your receiver has a dedicated wire for RSSI, that's where you want to put it. Then we also have a ground in a 5 volt. And I'm just trying to go over this just to figure out where you would connect your S bus currently because, you know, S bus is inverted and this is still an F4 flight controller. All right, so UART3 here, that's where they want you to install your receiver from what I understand. So ground, 5 volt, and then... R3, which is UART3 right here. That's where you put your signal from your receiver. However, I cannot confirm if this will actually work with S bus or only I bus or, you know, vice versa. So keep that in mind. So for example, Spectrum, you have your 3.3 .3 volt, you have your ground, and you have your R3. Now, right below uh, R3, we have SPT, which is smart port. Now, this is, this should be inverted. So for some reason, if you're using I bus on R3, and it didn't work, it's just not registering, then you might want to move your signal down to this one right here because this theoretically should be inverted since it's a smart port. And SPT is connected to UART1, so keep that in mind. So you would put your serial RX to UART1 if your S bus signal didn't work on R3 here. And then here we have TX6 and RX6, which is UART6. And then here we also have some pads for uh, the I2, the I squared C protocol, if you wanted to connect sensors. Yeah, and then here we have motor five, six, seven, and eight. So we have a total of eight motor outputs that we can access and possibly remap to something else if we needed. And here we just have another five volt in ground, possibly if for some sort of a sensor that you're gonna connect here. I must say, I'm pretty impressed with the design. I really like the fact that it has a nine volt regulator on board, even though it's not an all-in-one flight controller. And also like the idea how they've even provided you with a PDB in case uh, you don't have a four in one ESC or something of that nature, which is really nice because I don't think they, re they have released an ESC just yet. I could be wrong, but I highly doubt it. Um, so yeah, that's really nice that they give you this whole package here, but I mean PDBs are kind of outdated nowadays, but I'm sure it could be useful for many other things if you needed to. Uh, they also do provide you, even though the gyro is soft mounted, they also, they also give you these ones here. These are really nice uh, mounting soft mounts here. I really like these actually, and uh, it's, it's a huge addition here. They give you just about everything you need in the low ESR capacitor. It's highly recommended to always add a capacitor, even if you think you don't need it. Um, it's just in the overall long run, it's really good for your overall components. And um, 
it'll reduce voltage spikes and just just you know soak up all that extra unwanted noise and it's just a huge addition that they've also gave this to you and well that's it guys if you guys have any questions or have used it please let us know down in the comment section that's all i can currently say right now i don't know if i'll be building this very soon but if i do i'll let you guys know obviously you guys will see it and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys